so it's another Thursday, and I'm having another bi-weekly transfusion, and I am honoured to have a very special guest. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am talking with my long-time friend and the youth support coordinator of Ward J94. Carrie, I I know I need to know as Carrie Gallifer, Carrie Point now. You're a pointer sister. I'm a pointer sister. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so it's been nine months, ten months nearly since yeah. I last saw Tom. Since I last saw you on December twenty third, which was the premiere of The Clown. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, wow, gosh, it's been a long time, and I was looking very fat at that point, <laughs> about to have a baby, and I have since had the baby, it's I reared think... the baby, <laughs> and come back to work. So, <laughs> so then, so that was December, and now it's Octo the end of October, Yeah. and I've not seen you all year, so we're just going to use this um, podcast as a catch up. Yeah, that's it, find selfishly. Every... Every nook and cranny of things that we've been up to. You have to find out what you think other people want to know because, like, I've been really bad at blogging. Right, okay. Are you doing your blogging anymore? Yeah, I've done one video blog and that's about it. Okay. When did you do that? June or July. Right. So what stuff have you been doing that? It's just a lot of work. You have to set up the camera, put yourself in front of the camera, feel confident in front of the camera. Um, and then you got to edit it, and that's kind of why I turned to the podcast because it's a bit easier. It is once you and get you into the... worry about how you look, yeah, that's <laughs> the one good thing. So I can do it straight as the moment I wake up, yeah. So between January and now, what are the what have you been up to that stands out? The, the major thing is like the whole change of my um. Changing the way I get treated. You don't have to find it at me. I'm not. All right. right sorry, I was just confused. <laughs> it felt like <laughs> Tom's telling me off for using the microphone wrong. To all those of you who can't see. So yeah, um, in sometime around March or April, I got a puncture in my Hickman line. Right. And this is the second puncture in that Hickman line. And that was a Hickman line that you've had in. Under your skin for how many years? Nine years. Nine years, which is a long time. Yeah, these, these hitman lines are undesigned to be in your body for like six months. Yeah, but you got a bit of time to grow, didn't you? Yeah, and I saw I've used it a lot as a... Should, as a sorry, a, I just think you should explain what hitman line does. Um, I know, that's, that's a good point, like, when is the right time to kind of... what I, What I've made a promise to about this podcast is to not go into any scary medical details. Okay. So you're going to tell people about your condition? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's the whole kind of reason um, um, for doing it, but to not present it so um, harshly. Right. But so, do you think maybe that's something you should do at the beginning so that people... I've done one episode. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, you've talked about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. So, so all you need to know about a Hitman line is it's a line that comes out of the chest for... Um, so you don't have to be putting with needles all for the time. It's basically for giving you medical use. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my, in my A long case, term blood. Way, which is your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. Um, so yeah, that got a puncture in it uh, in around me- March or April. And... Were you in hospital? No. Um... I can't remember what happened. They tried to make me go somewhere. They they tried to repair it, and the repair did work actually, but it was now twice the length that it was. Right. <laughs> because, um, yeah. So it was just a temporary solution for before I got a new device fitted, and I was I'd always talked about. One in a part of cast next because a part of cast, everything is under the skin, yeah. nothing comes out. 
and I didn't know at the time how much it would change my life, but it is literally changed wow. my life. I can see on your face as well. Yeah. As you say that. How, why is it changed your life so much? What? Well, I think one of the major things, well, you don't have, like, I used my Hitman line a lot, as a lot as a security blanket to wear baggy clothes, um, protect myself when going out. Um, and I was, I was always very aware of it and even like... You were worried about getting knocked and yeah. things like that? My muscles in the arm on the side of my body, which my hitman line was, are more defined than the other side. And I'm convinced that is because I used the arm that my hitman, the side of the body that my hitman line was on, as a protection. Like a shield. Yeah, a shield. So, not having to do that anymore. It's like it's changed the way I want to dress. It's changed the things that I think I can go out and do, which is like swimming. You've been swimming? I've been swimming. How was that? Great. Was that the first time you've been swimming in what? Um, yeah, nine years. Wow. <laughs> and did you, who did you go with? Nobody. I went on my own. Was it quite liberating? Yeah. That was, that was for the first wow, time I've ever been. that's incredible for me. Like, when, when I got in the pool, I actually kind of started to, like, I couldn't steady my breathing. Really? So I had to get out again and kind of, like, calm myself down and be like, I know you're excited, but it's not, you know, because I'm mean, kind of worried. Is I, that because you can't submerge yourself in the hit the way, really? Yeah. And so that's the first time you could submerge. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, do you think, like, what, did it take you a while to adjust? No. Do you still feel protected over your podcast? I forget it's there. Wow. Mm. So it didn't hurt having it put in, or...? And that's another thing, I was awake during the whole procedure. Right. Um, I was, I was really nervous because the plan was that they were going to remove my Hickman line and put my part of cap in. All in the same day. Mm. So I was really nervous for having this operation, well, procedure. Um, but when it came to removing the Hickman line, um, the area that it was was not as clean as the surgeon would have liked it to be. So he gave me a, a time to. Like, I think it was six weeks to let my um, infection and its site oh, okay. clear up. Just How did you have your transfusion then? With um, IV. IV. Um, what do they call it? Peripheral. Mm. So, yeah, that was quite a, a throwback as well. I, I, I went to documenting that on Instagram. And the, the artwork that I'm using for the podcast at the moment is of um, my... Uh, Venus. Cannula in, oh, in, my, in, my, in my arm yeah. with the drip stand in the background. So that was, but my veins just can't wow, sustain that. that. By, by the, the third time that I needed a transfusion, it took three times to, get to, to find a vein. Wow. And then, did, oh my gosh, did it take them from, did it take some getting out? You hit them like? No, that's the thing. Wow. I was real. The um, the surgeon um, told me all this spiel about how um, because of a hitman line that's been in for nine years, there's a chance it could have um, worked itself in. Yeah, into your tissue. Yeah, and so he gave me all this talk, and I was there uh, laying down waiting, dreading it, and. I was there for two minutes and he said something and there was a, a nurse from Ward 94 who'd gone down with me and I looked at her and I said, did he just say he's taking it out? It's, it, and then that, that was it. He said, it's out and the site is um, raw. I, I don't want to go ahead 
putting in a podcast today. So we'll, we'll send you back. That that was it. It was literally like two minutes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, right. So I didn't even know that that had been done, really. Uh, well, that's, that's pretty big news, really. Yeah, I don't think I've documented that mm. either. Are you just feeling more confident in yourself? Or... It's amazing how some people are. Mm. It's not a small, because it's not a small thing, but. Well, you perhaps think... people wouldn't think it's a huge issue. You think about how I've had a Hickman, I've, I've, I've had Hickman lines since I was 12 years old. That is more than half my life. Yeah. Yeah. So now need my treatment without it. It's kind of like dying a whole new chapter. Yeah, yeah. And is that how, that's how you feel? Yeah. yeah. So that's what's given you the confidence then, maybe to, because you were telling me uh, yesterday that you joined Meetup, which is an online kind of website for meeting up with, with new people, and new friends, new ways of... Uh, getting out and about really which i have been on it with for two three years i said that. that so yeah after three years of me nagging you you finally joined it when i'm not even around <laughs> <laughs> and the results it, yeah it I, it came at the right time but i could have done it sooner like it, it came at the right time because now i don't feel I don't feel that anything's holding me back. Sometimes there's the voice in the back of my head that's wary that at any moment I could get a line infection and be brought into hospital. So now there's nothing like that. And how, how has it made you feel like doing it? So you've been three meetups? Yes. Yeah. In total. How have you found them? No, not in total. Far in total, but three groups. Right. Well, how have you found them? What did you feel like when you were first going to your first one? Well, I used the cinema group as a first one, as a as an incentive to get to the cinema. So that's a good idea. Um, I th- I've kind of talked about this. Um, in the first episode, oh, okay. how if I was going on my own to the cinema, I would talk myself out of it. So if there's a group of people there, you kind of feel that there is an um, an incentive, an added incentive. Why would you talk yourself out of it if you were going on your own? Because nobody's would depends on you. Okay. And then. I, I mentioned all that how, as it happened, somebody was expecting me to be there because yeah. I signed up to the group. Yeah. So you went along. What what happens? Do you, I assume you meet up before you go into the yeah. Just in the lobby. Yeah. In the lobby. And how do you know who you're meeting? Just do the profile pic, really. Oh right. I okay. mean, the the guy in charge is, is really um, overly nice and provides his phone number, but. I'm I'm a bit hesitant to go down that route straight away. Straight away. Yeah. So you, you recognised the group straight away. Yeah. And you just walked up to them and said, "Hi, I'm Tom." Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm the new I'm the new meet new Which <laughs> is for anybody who doesn't know Tom, that's a massive thing. Like Tom that I met six years ago wouldn't have done that. You probably you well I don't think you would have even turned up in the first yeah. place. But if you had, you probably would have took one look at the group and maybe walked. What's the way, maybe? Maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I, I think even last year, I, I, knew, <coughs> I knew of the meetups and I kind of shadowed one to have a look at the... Um, so you stopped a meetup group? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Just to see, like, what kind of environment the park. Was it the cinema one? No, no. How many of it was? So, as I was saying, yeah, so that's a pretty big thing, the fact that you just walked up, I, I assume, quite confidently and said, I'm, I'm the newbie. The bigger um, pressure was the one at the pub. Yeah, so tell us about that. 
Okay, so it's um, 7 p.m., 7.30 on a Saturday night, and I'm going to a pub I've never been to before, but I never go to a pub. Um, Which pub? Very tough. Oh, in Hensley? No, the Leeds one. Behind town. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's nice there. Yeah. Um, so, I kind of gave myself a bit of time to maybe allow the, the knowledge that people will have shown up already. So it's not just me and someone else. And so I went and I made myself, I sat down on the table next to the group. There was a group of like, well, it was a table for porn, so they were at a, a table. So there's no real way for me to sit. And I, I, I held back a bit too much. But the new that I was there for the group and it hadn't kind of officially died yet. But it took for somebody to kind of reach out to me before I opened up. Yeah. I'm, I'm still figuring out how to slot myself into groups. There was a point in the night where people were all stood up and socialising. And that's really difficult for me being stood on my feet. So I was sat down, and fortunately enough, there was kind enough people to kind of see me and talk to me because they wanted to talk to me. And yeah, it was kind of a something that I never really think about. So, how did you feel at the end of it? What time did you settle? <clears throat> what time did you settle? Oh, yeah, um, I think it was 10. And how did you feel at, by the end of it? Were you comfortable? Yeah. It, in, in fact, it was a struggle for me to leave because I didn't want to seem rude. Were you, <laughs> were you one of the first to leave? No. I left with, with I, try, I used the opportunity when somebody else was leaving to kind of use that. So I could piggyback on their goodbyes. Right, okay. <laughs> but there was somebody at the pub group who was also gone to the cinema oh, okay so ha having somebody that i knew that was there helped a lot and since that was the third time i'd seen her she was close enough to ask me more personal information about, yeah. about my illness which is something it's kind of with these meetup groups it's such a relief not to have to go into detail because if you're meeting somebody one-on-one -on -one, i'm always preset to go into all the details when it, sh it, it shouldn't matter. But she asked you, what, she just asked you? What, mm. Or you, you kind of initiated that? It may have been something like, yeah, like she had asked what I'd done in the week and so I said, you know, I had my treatment and I think that I should ex and she said, do you mind me asking what that involved? And I said, no, oh, no, I don't mind you asking. Yeah. Um, I think that's really brave. I mean, I think even people who've got, uh, you know, a lot of confidence in a normal situation, if you put them in a group of, with a group of strangers, I'm exactly the same. If you put me, if you say, if I'm going to meet a group of people I've never met before, I don't know how to spot them at the beginning, you know, like, I'm, I'm quite chatty and confident myself, but it is, like, yeah. hard, it's a hard thing to do just to know, and especially for the kind of situations where we sort of see, you know, we see each other patient, you yeah. don't want to, it's like you feel a bit awkward, you don't want to ask someone to, to joke, but you don't want to <laughs> sit separately, it's, it's, I think it is a bit awkward, so I think, hats off to you for that. It, it's just knowing... Like reminding myself that I am not alone in feeling like oh, that. Oh, not at all. Because in situations with fathers, I sort of felt like I'm the only one who feels out of place at the moment. No, I think that's uh, that's absolutely true. That it, I mean, a lot of people go to those meetup groups and feel like that, and that's at the end of the day why those groups exist. Yeah, exactly. If people were already establishing groups of friends, they wouldn't be using those groups. So that is. You know, always have that in the back of your mind. That's what they're for. 
Um, so do you think, are, are you going to go back to the second and right group? Um, yeah, um, I think there's one, they call it, meet up for new members and hold on with the point to work for new members. Oh, that sounds kind of, good. Kind of a good. Yeah. When's that? I don't know. Off, off time. That'll be good then. Yeah, okay. So you're uh, a lot more social, sociable than you were when I Yeah. Like, but funnily enough, it's only happened this month. Yeah. But that's. Uh, it took a while. It took yeah. like getting all my. Take my mind to get sorted out. Well, I'm so pleased. <laughs> I really am. I am pleased. I thought about you a lot, a lot while I was off as well. So, what else? Boys, talk to you about boys. <laughs> That's funny. I was going to say, there's a meet-up this Saturday with the Leeds Gay Men. <laughs> which is the one that I think you outlined for me. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> um, and that's this Saturday? During the afternoon at a coffee place. Right. So another great thing is to have meetups that aren't centered around alcohol. Yep. Not being somebody who drinks, it's it's a relief to be in, in an environment where other people aren't having alcohol. Yeah. It's, it's always kind of a like there was one guy at the Saturday meetup who had been drinking quite a lot beforehand, and he was loud and. I got this, I got, just got a bit of a, it's like a loud Yorkshire map. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's kind of um, a, a, a sentence that everyone's going to understand. Okay. <laughs> Bullshit. Good, good. Um, but there was, I don't know if it was me being paranoid because it was the first time I was, where I was there, but I felt almost I was getting looks from him that were longer than just glances, like, of staring, that you would call, like, ignorant staring. Really? But, and that, and that, and that just comes with, like, if somebody's kind of had a bit too much to drink, that their, their filter's gone down. Yeah. They don't kind of know to maybe not look and, or if they are going to look, ask, yeah. talk, yeah. engage yeah. you in a conversation. Yeah. And I guess... Maybe, you know, if it, it could, maybe he's been somebody to be a neighbour. Yeah. You don't know, do you? But that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with alcohol, isn't it? So it'll be a relief to meet in the cafe. Yeah. With the, with the other group. So everyone's on the same kind of wavelength. Unless they've been drinking before they go to the cafe. So what happens to that then? Is it just kind of a meet up and a chat? Yeah. Um... Because there are some there that are newbies to the group, and I've said I, I'll be a newbie. So, um, look at what was it? I may be, no, I think there's a student going, so I don't think I'll be the youngest. But this, this game and meetup, there's quite a lot of ones, gay men who are later in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A technical term. That is a technical life later in life gaze. It's a very technical. Is it really? Yeah, like if you watch a movie. Is like, that say like people who've been married and mm, then yeah come out? Oh, right, okay. I think um, there's, it's it's quite a, a a topic in some films. Like there was one with um, Ewan McGregor and Jim Carrey. No, not Jim oh. Carrey. Um, you and McGregor was the son of gay dad. I can't remember oh, what the film was. And this is something I was doing at the cinema group, and they were, they were all like, oh, we're really um, fortunate to have somebody with such a depth of film knowledge. Oh, God, they don't know <laughs> half of it, do they? Um, so, but in regards to boys, any goss? Um, well, I went on two dates this month. Right. But they were just kind of like, um, one was pizza, um, and then the other one was for the juice smoothie. 
And where did you meet these? Online. Right. Um on what they call it. Not what is it? It would be the grinder or scrub. Right. Um which before me up um and Gaydar, which is like online with but these are phone apps, so it's a lot more accessible. Yeah. Um So the problem with these dates were they were younger than me. Right. And I wanted this is I wanted to make friends. Um and um I just didn't feel that there was any um this of common ground. Right. They were kind of interested in student life and party. And right, okay. So then that and that's when I made the move to join me up. Okay. Because you're more likely to go maybe to meet someone to get to know them first. Yeah. Is it a bit would I be um right in thinking that sometimes with these app things it's just it's just about sex sometimes. Yeah. So people meet up not with a, a real agenda for getting to know someone and making a relationship, it's more just about here and now. Is that a fair comment? Yeah. Fair? Yeah. Because they do have like a bit of a reputation for that, don't they? I don't know. I've never known if that's true, really. It or... is true. The, the saying I've thought of is I don't use the app Grinder and Scrub to make friends. I use them to meet guys and then make friends. Yeah. Because there are some who just want to have back and forth yeah. texting. And I've, I, I've had my fair share of having texting because... I get, I get stuck in doors a lot. Yeah. Uh, growing up and stuff. You know, this is a time when I want to start going out and yeah. actually doing real inter lab socialising rather than socialising text or socialising yeah. one on one. Yeah. Away from everybody. Yeah. So are you are you would you say is it fair to say are you are you looking for a relationship? You'd like yeah, I was saying last episode, I've kind of figured out that the meaning of life is to find your partner. <laughs> I, I don't know, that's just kind of what it feels yeah. like to me. You want to find your people. Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking to find my people. And if that happens to bring me to find the one, yeah. then all the more for it that I'm not. Um, I'm not beating myself up about not making an effort to go on more dates and stuff. Right now, I'm just focusing on friend socialising. Yeah, I think that's a good. That's a good um, approach, really. It's nice to have a nice circle of friends and be able to just go out and about, and that's how you're going to meet people in the end, yeah. isn't it? So. If the way, the best friendships you're gonna have are to be in an environment where you meet somebody, and it isn't about the fact that you've both set each other up to meet each yeah. other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I think about my friend Emily, and fr- she became my friend because she worked at the bagel shop, and I want I I I loved bagels. Yeah. So the more I kept going in, the the the, the bagel was what brought us together. Yeah. But then, the more she saw me, the more she was interested yeah. to know what I was doing. And then it led on to films and how we both loved films. Yeah. So, yeah. This life just sounds good to me at the minute, which is, I'm just so genuinely, well, no, I am I'm genuinely so happy. Considering where you were a couple of weeks ago. It's hard to. I can't. Maybe you should describe what that come was like. Mm. And don't be harsh. No, don't be harsh. <laughs> no, I mean, sorry, don't hold back. Well, I think. No, it's hard to remember. I just know that you were, you was, you went through a phase. I don't know if it was a phase. It was a long phase. Probably just not being very happy. I think. Um, 
I don't think you really knew who you were. I think I think I think that you you were trying to find yourself for a few years, really. And it's like you'd say that's a fair comment, maybe. Um, and I think if you've had a you have had a difficult life, very difficult, more difficult than most people would ever or should ever have to deal with. And in some ways that's made you very resilient and, and strong, but in other ways I think it's it's sheltered you a bit from because it's had to from from a lot of things and you know, perhaps made you a bit less confident than what people would like to see you as. Uh, and I think that's been difficult for you at times. Because I think that's fair. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think you, were, you had some times when you were a bit kind of unhappy. And we did what we could. We tried to do things, didn't we, to kind of keep yeah. going with your interests and, and, and you know, we tried the creative writing course. There's something so. about Carrie, it's that she's not one to take no for an answer. <laughs> and that's not in a mean way, that's just in a, she knows that for the greater good, it will benefit you. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, not, not everything always did, did it? But we tried, I think. But I mean, like, I don't think you meant to edit, edit it out, mm. I don't want to say it, but is it like, uh, the time when you were really, really down, and you had some hypnotherapy for your anxiety. Oh yeah. I mean, that was a real dark time, and you know, I wondered, I just didn't know what to do for you at that point, and I just, you know, I think people around you felt quite helpless then because it's it's easy to see what somebody needs to do, and you know, I just wanted you to get out there and socialise, and you know. I just want to see if I could have physically given you some a bag of confidence. Mm. I would have done that. Do you know what you did that really helped? Is you kind of kept pushing me to get in contact with Anthony. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have had the confidence to think that he was interested in a friendship. But at the time, he was also needing that. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and I, I suppose in a, in a in a way that goes to show you that sometimes, even though it is about you, sometimes that makes you realise that actually someone else is having a difficult time. And yeah. As much as you need something and you need help, actually, you can be that help to someone else. I've got this. I had this complex about me that I remember saying it to my friends in sixth form once. I've got this paranoia, paranoia yeah. that I started six form late into the, the month, so everyone else had always been there. And I told my friends, I was like, I've got this paranoid theory that the, like, the head of year came to my form group and said, you know, there's this kid joining, is, is a bit different. Um, I'm, I'm assigning you and you to be friends with him, and you've got no say in the matter. <laughs> I'd rather believe that than believe that they are actually wanted Want to be my friends. Friend. Yeah, that, that, and that comes straight back to your confidence level, doesn't it? You know, yeah. I think you, you have had times in your life when you thought, "Who would want to be friends with me? I don't benefit anybody." I, I think you've even said that to me before, like, you know. Why would people want to be friends with me? I remember I had that realisation during psychotherapy that I thought to myself that nobody wants to be around me. Yeah. And that took a lot of... And that's, that, you know, that's a really dark hole to get out of. Yeah. Um, and I think it's probably been a gradual process, I think, you coming out of that. But the difference that I see now to when that to last Christmas, I think, is massive. And I think, obviously, the biggest part of that is is what nobody would really expect is your life. Yeah. You know. It's all. I would have thought maybe if you'd have had a party a couple years ago. Yeah, right? that's the thing. I'm kind of like, because the line became 
something I kind of hid behind. Yeah. I had it for nine years simply because I was too afraid to think about what life would be like That's any other way. Yeah, yeah. Cause you are, would you say, I think that you are a bit of a teacher of habits. Yes. Yeah, person. Because obviously with my spouts of being awake during the night and sleep during the day. Yeah. And just in general, I think, like, you know how you like things. And you're not big on change. Yeah. Really. Um, even, like, down to little things like you eat the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have your routine when you come to hospital. You know, your dad brings you a drink, your mum brings you a sandwich. And everything's kind of the same. It's the same kind of routine. It's yes. a bit routinified, isn't it? I, I was there. I don't know if Nikki touched upon that. How, like, I always used to eat the same thing. Mm. For every food. And I think it's just, it's like you know what you like. And you know what you don't like. And that's how you do, you put things in boxes, I think. Yeah. And that's how, that's how you organise your life. Of... And that's that's where, uh, why you, you, tr- you couldn't really imagine life without your Hitman line, because that was part of your life, and that was part of your routine. I'm just automatically assume that I'm not going to like anything new. Yeah. So, whereas now, well, I'm, I'm in the mindset that trying new things yeah. is much better. Absolutely. And that's a big that's a big shift in your mindset, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and that's all down to I think when you when you don't have any confidence, you think that you're not going to like something because it's different. But when you're more confident, you're just more open to everyone is. When they feel more confident, you're more open to ideas and open to change. And you feel like, well, if it's not great, I can handle that because I'm confident. Yeah. Have you been feeling great? Mm. <laughs> I thought about you loads, loads while I've been off. Tom wrote me a really soppy card that I didn't open until I had uh, completely forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I've still got it. It's in my special. I've got a special keepsake box that my card did. And I had a little tear when I read that. I didn't read it. I didn't read it until I got home after my last day at work. You know, I read that all off the top of my head. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> It was so nice. It was the day of the, that I knew it was the last day I was going to see yeah. you. So I popped to Urban Outfitters. I was at Joy's. I think it was Joy's. Um, one of the two. They do nice they do outfits. Nice well. outfits. Um, and I actually said to the person behind the counter, I'm going to borrow a pen for uh-huh. It was lovely. <laughs> it was so nice. I'll keep that forever. And I thought about you later, but I Because you're, you know, you're part of my permanent. Really, you're part of my routine, aren't you? Yeah. You know, as much as it's hard I am of to, yours. to tell myself that because when it comes to hospital, sometimes it is. Sometimes there are people who is just for work, yeah. but then I am kind of part of the pictures and things. You are absolutely. <laughs> I think. Um, I think for everyone who works there, you're a big part of their life because you're permanently here. Yeah. You know? Well, not permanently, but. I mean, it's every you know, other week. It's every other week. You know, we know you're going to be in. I look forward to coming in because I know we'll always do something and mm. have a good catch up. No, I do. I genuinely do that. Um, I'm always gutted when you when you come in when I'm on leave. Like, oh, <laughs> could you come in on a different day? But yeah, I think uh, you're a big part of this ward, really, aren't you? It's it's good. This is a good um, way to document that because with this, a lot of this ward's aim is cancer related. And yeah. I do sometimes feel hard to find my place to yeah, express. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think it's hard because it's a, it is a teenage cancer ward, but it's a ward designed for young people with cancer. Yeah. Yet the person that frequents the ward the most and has been there the longest and the staff know the best has never had cancer. <laughs> I, I've <laughs> you, had chemotherapy. You've had chemotherapy, but not for cancer. Yeah, but not for cancer. Um, and I suppose that's how you kind of end up with us, because this is the best place for you at that time. Yeah. But your, your condition is it's one not, of those things that not cancer, but yet you're the one that everybody knows the best. For the patient, your hope is for them 
to get better and go off and never see them again, as, yeah. as mean as that sounds. Yeah. You want them to get a better, yeah. a better, back, back to their normal life. Yeah. yeah. So for me, this is my life, but you want to see how I can better handle getting a, a real life, as yeah. it were. I think that's it. We try to try and want you to have as normal a life as possible. Yeah. While you also dealing with what you what you're dealing with. But yeah, no, that's a fair point. Yeah. Everything's getting really philosophical. Yeah. No, but that is a fair point. That is probably exactly it, really. So I well, suppose we'll wrap off until next time. Yeah, because obviously that's kind of going to be somebody who might. What I've decided is. Thursday, if I haven't recorded it beforehand, it's a great opportunity that I'm, I'm at a fixed point where yeah. I, I've got nothing else to do. Yeah, so we can just get on with it. And, and you'll have no hesitations in making sure that I've even stayed on. And maybe that I do it every yeah, two weeks. Yeah, you really bossy. <laughs> I'm a bossy. <laughs> You've just got this way of making me feel guilty. Ah, that's not a good thing, Tom. <laughs> oh no, I need to change that. <laughs> not in a good that. way. Like you always, I always think of you when I'm like slouching and shirking my responsibilities. <laughs> I think what would Carrie say? She she would always push me to do something active. <laughs> Good stuff. I'm, I'm definitely pushing off this film festival shit schedule. All it needs to do is just, I need, just need to look at it. Yeah, it's not hard, is it? And draw a path. Yeah, it's not hard. It's not hard. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got another three hours to go, so that's... Yeah, exactly. I've got, Have we got pizza night? Yeah. Can I give you here? an official thank you? And I will enjoy... Your company for many until you have the next kid. I want to thank Carrie once again. I hope you enjoyed this different take on the Tom's Brain podcast. Please let me know if you do because I'd love to get more people onto the podcast. led an interesting life and met some people that I wouldn't have usually met, given all my hospital treatment, so there's a lot of people that I would like to talk to. I'm just wondering if any of you would find that interesting. Get in contact with me. I am LGBTom on Twitter. Use the hashtag Tom's Brain. You can like me on my Facebook page, Tom's Brain Pod, and as old fashioned email, Tom's Brain 2 at yahoo.co.uk. As I hinted at, this podcast will be back in two weeks' time, so enjoy your break from me next week, and I promise to have lots of lovely tales about the film festival when I get there. Assuming that I don't fall ill. <laughs> Have a good evening. Have a good morning. Whatever time of day you're listening to this, I hope you're well. I'm Thomas McManus. You've been listening to Tom's Brain. Thank you.